Hey guys, welcome back to yet another YouTube video. Uh, here and in this video, I will be reviewing the uh, the Adelaide Crows 2022 season. So, um, so, uh, so last season, um, of course they finished 16th with with seven win uh, with seven wins. They jumped two places up to 14th this year. A win better with eight wins. Um, a, 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 to further it's a, 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 the improvement is is just get, it's just getting be better and better. But unfortunately, um, of course, the end of the season wasn't that great. Obviously, with another thumping in the showdown to Port. So, so yeah. Um, so obviously, um, as I said, eight wins. Uh, compared to the seven that they had last year, that's an improvement. That's an improvement also, especially with the position also. It, it's it, it, yeah, it's it it that it just proves how um, the competitions improved. Obviously, they uh, had uh, they had one win better than they had last year, but they've jumped two positions. So, so yeah, um, so uh, so yeah, um. To the highlights, there were there were a few of them, a few of those. Um, so uh, of course, start off with of course of course the highlight of course one of the highlights of the season and their low light of the season were both against Port Adelaide, ironically in the showdown. Um, of course that uh, the, the first showdown that absolute classic uh, with of course Jordan Dawson, of course who who uh, which who was a new recruit for the Crows this season, which which we'll get to him later. Um, he uh, 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 saw him uh, kick, uh, kick the goal that won the game. I, uh, uh, I still, I don't know which, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, that'll be a question for you guys down in the comments. Uh, what, no, which, which, after the siren goal, do you think was better? Do you think Elliot's was better? I, I still think Elliot's was better, but, um, I don't. I think Dawson's kick for goal was it was it was actually better than better than what everyone else thinks. So, so yeah, and and, and, and it was and it was at that sort of time where obviously Port Adelaide was still in the midst of their zero and five start for the season. So, so yeah, um, and of course and, and of course the middle of a bit of those four straight games where they basically were involved in classics as well with Port. So they got over the line in that one. Uh, excuse me. Um the round twenty win against Cat against Carlton, that one that was a that one that one was was a defining win. That was a defining game, not for the Crows, but for Carlton, because that was pretty much the beginning of them getting it that was pretty much the beginning of their downhill slope towards basically sliding out of the eight um at, at the final round uh i mean i mean adelaide were just great i don't i think it was more i don't know if it was down to adelaide playing great in that game or was or Carlton playing actually terrible i think it was something to do with both i mean the 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 break the tackle breaks were j it was just ridiculous for, uh, for, uh, from from Adelaide's perspective. I mean, they, um, Carlton missed a lot of tackles, and, and, and of course, uh, Adelaide pay, uh, paid paid uh, of course uh, made them pay with that with that twenty nine point with that twenty nine point win, um, which uh, which they which that win was fully deserved. That uh, Carlton were off from what I've heard from pretty much since the start of the game. So. But as I said, that was from what I've heard. So, so yeah, the low light of the season had to be the, of course, ironically, the second showdown, which was in which was in the final round of the season. And I'll sh I'll tell you why that is, because after the Counting game, even though the next two wins were against, ironically, the seventeenth place West Coast Eagles and the eighteenth place North Melbourne. They were real. They were starting to get into decent form, um, on and, and and those two wins were confidence. Those three wins were more confidence boosting wins 
to be uh, to be honest. They even they, they, their season was a bit of, it was a bit dead rubber, but uh, but they were uh, still nonetheless for the next, uh, for uh, for some of the players to build belief for next season. Until we got to round twenty three, um, yeah, they were in the game uh, from what I've heard uh, until half time. Then things started to go downhill from there. Um, as they got smashed to the tune of night uh, to almost ten goals by uh, by Port, um, who, uh, who of course had a couple of players who were playing their last games, in particular Robbie Gray. Um, so yeah, so it's uh, uh, so so I think for me uh, it, it's per and this would be perfectly uh, it sent into me marking uh, marking them out of ten. I if before the before the Port Adelaide game last week or two weeks ago I should say now uh, as I'm recording this um, I probably would have given them a four out of ten because it was a, a very much another improving season um, and maybe if they had won the second showdown for example maybe I would have given them maybe a, close to four and a half maybe five out of ten um, but uh, but. I've given I've downgraded them to a three because of that specifically that round twenty three loss and to to say to um for what Port Adelaide players to say that 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 the Crows were entitled and all that sort of stuff to to then back it up with what they put uh, for what they uh, for what they did in round twenty three it was just it was just terrible for the for the Crows uh, for the Crows players and the Crows as a club as a whole. Um, that or whatever just one came out of my mouth just made, didn't make sense at all. But uh, but yeah, but, um, but yeah, but I've decided to at least give them a three out of ten. If they if they performed decently well again against um, Port, I would have probably would have given them a four four and a half or maybe even a five out of ten. But I decided to give them a three uh, a three out of ten. Um, now to the players. Um, so Jordan so first off Jordan Dawson um I think he uh play, I think he was probably one of the best players he will finish high in their best and fairest probably I mean career best season in the midfield I mean he yeah, uh, uh, in sorry in defense uh, 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 and also for, uh, for uh, also going through the midfield as well averaged uh, averaged over 24 and a half disposals a game um, intercept, intercept possessions. He he, um, he aver he averaged um six and a half um, intercept six and a half intercept possessions a game. Um, two and a half intercept marks per game. Six hundred over six hundred three and a half uh, meters gained per game. That's a, 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 a massive amount. And then of course six point eight um rebound fifties per game. So. So it was so it was a great it was a great year for Dawson and especially of course um he did himself to the Crows fans by kick, by of course kicking that goal after the siren to win the Crows the game against Port Adelaide in the showdown in round four that really enticed him and just said yeah yeah he's definitely going to be in love with the Crows fans obviously because he kicked the kicked the goal to win the game after the siren against. None other than Port uh, 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 than, than the power. So, uh, so what else can uh, if if he, if that didn't get it, if that didn't get him uh, getting popular with the fan, with the Crows fans uh, that uh, with that with that moment, I don't know what 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 would I don't know what would in the end. Um. So, um, another one that starred for them was, of course, as usual, uh, Tex, Walk uh, Tex Walker. Um, what no, what nobody uh, uh, is sort of talking about is his uh, his his career sort of renaissance or, or resurgence or something like that in the last two years. Um, I mean, it's it's just unbelievable. Since since this new this new stand rule where it's opened the game up, it's really um um it really affected Tex in a good way. That now he can uh, it, 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 he like like 
for, from 2018 to, to 2020, obviously, um, a big asterisk for 2020 because it was a shortened game. He only he only scored eighty four goals in fifty games between in between twenty as I said between twenty eighteen and twenty twenty, um, on average that's about one point six goals per game, um, goals per game, but since the stand rule has come in, um, he's scored he's scored ninety five goals in thirty five games, two uh, that is close to three uh, two point seven goals per game. It's close to three goals per game. Uh, that it, that is just absolutely bonkers <laughs> for uh, from Tex, and it, it, and it could have been more if it wasn't for his, suspe his suspension with that with that um, with the whole racism thing. He probably could have got more goals. He probably would have got uh, that that figure of ninety five goals could have been up over a hundred if he if he didn't get suspended for uh, for that period. So so yeah, even even though. So he's not the most liked person, liked player in the league. Uh, some, uh, from what I've heard, most most people dis uh, dislike him. Um, but uh, but you've got to say that he you can't deny that he is a, a great player, and I think he'll be up there with with, with likes of definitely be up there with the likes of um, McLeod and uh, McLeod and Jarman. The uh, sorry, the Jarmans, I should say, in both um, uh, Andrew and Andrew and Darren, um, and uh, and, and Rashudo as probably a handful of uh, full of greats at, at, at the Adelaide Football Club. So, so yeah, so uh, so and especially of course in the early years where he um, we had a lot of it, it was it was. Had a lot of injuries, and now he's really getting consistent run at run with his footy. So, so yeah. Um, speaking of forwards, the next one is um, Darcy Fogarty. Now, I think this is a real coming of age season for him, especially since the bye. Um, I, 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 I think a couple of people have mentioned his form over the last over the last ten over the last. Um, ten ten games for for Fogarty. Um, before the bye between rounds one and twelve, he only scored eight goals in seven games. He uh, he's he was he was he was limited to, to AFL opportunities. I think he spent most of the first half of the season playing the sample, I believe, um, scoring over a goal a game. Then, then it all changed after the bye when when he, he scored twenty five goals in ten games at two and a half uh, scoring two and a half goals per game during that time. Um, during that time, I, I think better. I think during that time period, better better than probably almost better than than, than the likes of Mackay, Kerno, um, and uh, equal to uh, equal to many other many other good great. Um, other great great goal scoring forwards that are around this season. So, so, uh, so yeah. So I believe I think, and in total, he ended up scoring. Um, uh, he ended up scoring thirty uh, thirty three goals in seventeen games. Um, uh, which of course, uh, which I said is a more of a is I think it's gonna be a, as, as I said earlier, um, a, a breakout season for him, and and I think now. I think I think he's uh, I think it, 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 I, uh, because I think at the start of the season I think I, I think now um, Adelaide was heading towards uh, uh, having Riley Phil for partnering uh, Tex. Now I think it's probably now Fogarty um, that's going to be the main partner to Tex um, probably next season. Um, so so yeah and. Uh, and 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 so yeah, and yeah so, um, so so yeah so I, so I think I I think Fogarty is to watch this space. I I think watching in twenty twenty three. I believe, I think if he if he has a big preseason, then he'll he'll more more likely he will take his game to the next level in twenty twenty three. Um. So yeah. 
Now we head to the under pressure part of things. Now, I, I, I'll leave the, the obvious one for last. Uh, the first one is, of course, Matt Crouch. Now, there's been... Uh, 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 which um, I said this in the, in my fir in the first episode of um, of BD Trade Talk that he was weighing up possibly a, 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 a transfer request because obviously, as we all know, he's not necessarily been playing a lot of AFL footy as a way. I think I think it's time. I think he, it, it, I think he's going to go over two ways. Either he stays and it, it toughs it out and and tries to improve his game again, or uh, or if he thinks that he's not going to get AFL footy at, at the Crows, then maybe go to a Melbourne club. Um, and I, and I said it on BD Trade Talk. Um, he, uh, he's not been linked to anybody as of yet. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but obviously, um, this season he hasn't played that much from what he, uh, from what he usually has. So, so yeah, so, uh, so he might maybe join his brother Brad in going to a Victorian club. So, so yeah, that's still, that's the, the, the first under pressure out of the way. The big one is this young group, um, which I've got to say, um, for the amount of young talent that Adelaide's progressed through, it's been a bit disappointing. And I I can't put my finger on it at why that is. I don't know if it's something to do with the, with the environment at the club or something else, because they, they the only... The only decent player, uh, decent young player, that um, that they've bought that they've bought in, uh, in, in either the either the national draft or the rookie draft, or the uh, uh, or other, the other drafts has been Ben Keys, and he uh, and uh, and he's only twenty five, by the way. So that uh, uh, mate, uh, mate, uh, just um. Mate, uh, uh, just hits home in the end. Um, so, so they've drafted. Uh, so out of combined the rookie draft, the national draft, uh, uh, and all the other drafts, they uh, they have they have drafted in in total twenty five players since when they lost the twenty seventeen grand final, and. Uh, 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 you guys can't deny uh, can't deny the facts I've got here. Um, got here. Uh, in terms of the rankings, I've gone with the uh, with the rankings. You know, with the elite. You know, um, you know, above average, average, and below average. Um, based on the AFL Live app. Um, that, that I've got. Um, the only one that's above average is Ben Keys. That is it. The other two. Um, that uh, that's. Uh, th th there's two uh, others that have uh, that have not played yet. That is Zach Taylor and, and Luke Nan Curtis. Uh, those are the ones who haven't played yet, played for the Crows yet. Um, the other uh, the other twenty two though is even uh, it's even spread eleven in a, uh, in average and eleven in below average. Now the average range um, has the light. Uh, uh, has it has the likes of it has Fog it has Darcy Fogarty who uh, who is starting to get his get his act together with, with his game as I said earlier, um, Lock uh, Murphy who's starting to you know get uh, starting to uh, who was starting to be more of a regular but he didn't, he, I don't think he played that much I believe in twenty twenty two I believe we might have to look that up, um, Jordan Butts. Um, uh, who on his day he can he can be, uh, he can be a very decent key back, but obviously he hasn't he hasn't developed into in into the into the um in the, into the player they thought they would they would be he would be Harry uh, Harry Schoenberg. Um, uh, on his day he can be a very good tagger. Um, he can be a very good tagger, but unfortunately he doesn't show it to uh, show that too often. 
uh, Phil Forbes, um, some some promise at, at the start of last year when he first debuted, but unfortunately it's just been all downhill from there, uh, downhill from there really. So too uh, James Rowe is also um, a bit average, and to be honest, I don't know why the Bulldogs would be interested in him because there was recently rumours that. James Rowe would, uh, um, sorry, the Bulldogs would be interested in James Rowe. I don't, uh, judging by the stats I've read, I don't know why they would go for him because I think he's, uh, he would not be um, the player that, that probably the Bulldogs thought he would be. Um, and then obviously, uh, and then the, uh, the recent one is, of course, the, their first round pick from last year in, in Josh Shelley. Who uh, who uh, who had a pretty decent start to, uh, start to the season, but tailed off a bit, um, uh, tailed off a bit, um, at the back half of the season, and then the below average. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of potentially good players that ha that are in the below average. Uh, example example Chase Jones, who uh, who was picked at pick nine of the 2018 national draft. He is not. He is. He hasn't done, done much. To to be honest, uh, he he's he's hasn't been at the, the, the at the at the level that we all thought he was going to be. Um, Ned, 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 Ned McHenry. He has He hasn't done. He, he's also below average. Um, Will Hamill. Um, who 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 I thought who I thought was was okay during that during the season when when they won the wooden spoon in twenty twenty, but. He hasn't really kicked on since. Um, Lachlan Scholl, I mean, I mean, he he's also been also been below average. Um, uh, Fisher McCasey, um, who is also below average, and just like James Rowe, I do not know why Calton would be interested in him. I mean, they've already got they've already got um, Weeder, they got likes of Weedering and. And so and so on. I don't know why they were, they were, Carlton would be interested in him. Probably the only reason why, maybe he's from maybe he's from Victoria. Maybe I, I might have to check that and check that. But uh, re, but uh, uh, yeah, that's probably the only reason why he would go there. Um, uh, there, um, Sam Berry. Um, he's also he's also been a bit not bit not been at the level he thought we thought he was going to be. Luke Pedler, uh, also, um, also, um, James so uh, so, uh, uh, Soligo, uh, I fancy how you say his name. Um, he can, he can be. I think he. Uh, well, I'll let him go on that because he's like, because it's only just he's only it's only in his first year so. It's a bit unfair to uh, to call, uh, say that oh he hasn't been on the level because it's only been his first year. So, so yeah, and and during, and, and what also pe uh, people don't real uh, realize also is one fact also that this twenty twenty two squad it not it, it has the least experience in, in, in the league the, uh, this twenty twenty two squad. They were they were ranked eighteenth for age, so basically they were the youngest squad in the competition, and also ranked eighteenth for experience. I think that I think that the whole squad had about forty or so game uh, average on average of forty of forty or fifty games worth of experience, from what I've from what I've um read. So uh, so yeah, and, and also just to just to make matters. Probably worse. Also, um, they have a staggering twenty-five players, which is probably the top, uh, between eighteen to twenty-two. So that's probably high up there in in, in amongst that age bracket. Uh, uh, amongst that age bracket, I mean, the oldest out of this, out of all of these draft classes, and and that for the Crows. Of course, it's Ben Keys, so, uh, who only went in the rookie draft because Brisbane didn't want him. Um, he's only twenty five, and he's really starting to uh, to um, starting to, of course, get his uh, get his game together. Of course, he he he. he uh, there were, I think last year he was once considered to probably be be, be in the All Australian team at some stage, and probably I think he was close to uh, close to again um, as well, uh, quite uh, close to as well. Um, 
but but the youngest ones is the is the concern. I mean, the youngest to play, of course, is Josh Rochelle. He's only nineteen, and the youngest is, of course, Luke Dan Curvis, who's only eighteen and he hasn't played. So, and there's a lot of these youngsters that are, that are between eighteen to twenty two that have not played yet. So, um, so, uh, and there's also some of them that have that have played. So. So, uh, so what I'm saying is, is di this age group, it just it 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 needs to, it's their job to um, to uh, to uh, to bring the club forward, um, it, it's it's supposed to bring them into the future, but unfortunately, due to probably the the environment over at the Adelaide Football Club, football club, um, they're not they're not. Performing to 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 their to to what they what they were when they were drafted, and and that's and that's an, and that's probably an indictment on the club really, um, because this is the future. These guys, these twenty five players between eighteen to twenty two, they're the future of the Adelaide Football Club, and as I said, some of them are are, are looking to be on the way out at Adelaide, so. Uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty disappointing, really, and and you can see also the three their three oldest play the three oldest players Sloan Walker and Smith, they're in their thirties. Uh, uh, the oldest is Sloan; and he's only I think thirty two. So he uh, so those three, uh, especially Sloan and Walker, they're in entering the second uh, uh, entering uh, uh, entering course. So, uh, of course, with Walker entering the twilight of their careers, so so you, so they need those young players, um, those young players to take the club forward, and unfortunately, they're not doing that. So that is, as I said, it's an indictment on the club, and it, it's probably down to, of course, the the um environment of the Adelaide Football Club that, that these youngsters aren't, aren't, aren't living up to their potential at the Adelaide Crows. So, so yeah. Um, so, that is pretty much it for this Adelaide, of course, season review. Of course, Sunrise, obviously, um, uh, I mean, finished uh, finished 14th position and, and won eight games compared to of course finishing 16th last year and winning seven games um in 2021 so um so yeah and and, and if and, and and if if they want to take that take that next step and probably maybe challenging for finals they, they need they need to have both their their, their experienced guys and their and their youngsters. Um, playing well, because otherwise, it's this is just it's just going to continue where they're going to finish, you know, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteenth, so, uh, all the time. So uh, so yeah, so um, so yeah, so they, so all those players, especially the youngsters, need to step up really. Um, so uh, like this video, um, share this to anybody who is a, who is an Adelaide Crows fan, uh, or a South Australian football fan, um, uh, uh comment, uh, comment down below, um, as, as I said earlier, comment down below what, uh, which goal after the siren, uh, win, uh, winning goal after, uh, match winner after the, uh, 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 trying to get this out. After the siren match winner, do you think was better? Do you think do you think Dawson's was better? Do you think was it, it was Elliot's? You know, maybe it was Noah Anderson's, maybe. Um, and we'll and we'll talk about that when when we get to the Gold Coast Suns. So, so yeah. And one uh, one last thing, somewhere down there, somewhere, um, click on the big red button which is labeled subscribe. Uh, so. Until next time, guys, I'll see you guys later. And wherever you may be, may the sunshine or the moon shine on you.